Okay, Rebecca, you're who you are. I'm Andrew Gibbons. We always say this. Um, so uh, I enjoy these learning conversations I've called. I mean, never quite know where they're going to go. And this one I brought up, it's about basically provocatively women, and I'm really strong about this, women make better learners than men. Uh, expressed by what that's what we can go into but i'm going to hang it out there again men do not make as good a learner as women generally lots of generalizations so provocative early provocative statement um women are better learners than men um start questioning me because it's an outrageous <laughs> thing to say <laughs> it is like you you love this sort of thing though don't you i guess so uh, i can I think I can see where you're coming from with this one. Ooh. I think sometimes... You might have a better idea than me. <laughs> well, I do wonder <laughs> whether women perhaps see... I, I know for myself, I'm, I'm a big in personal development, so I'm always keen to learn and always see the value in learning. I think perhaps maybe, and, I, and again, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe men don't necessarily always see you know I think men sometimes come across as a little bit more self-assured and don't necessarily always feel the need to continue to learn mm -hmm. and sometimes that can restrict them shall we say I think you're being very generous when you use the deliberate word self-assured I would use the word yeah. arrogant uh, <laughs> I think there's an inbuilt arrogance around a lot of men hey we're, I'm generalizing I'm generalizing, I'm not saying all women are this, all men are that, but I am saying, I don't believe it's a precisely 50% total equivalence thing. I think there's an imbalance in favor of one gender in relation to learning. I don't think that can be disputed because there'll be remarkable statistical currents if there's precise equilibrium. So if there's not equilibrium, who's got the upper hand? And I think it's women, and I think it's by quite a margin in my 41 years, because I'm very old experience, given that my experience is of broadly an HR industry, which is demographically favoring women by number, lots of other caveats. And if I'm annoying some people, great, because that might get you to think your own thoughts on this. It's not important I'm right. It's just interesting to explore these issues. Um, so I'm happy to go into some reasons why I think it is, but I'm already challenging your self-assured, I wrote it down, and already labeling that arrogance. I think current working practices favor men. Um, that men feel they've got an easier ride and don't have to try so hard, for instance, by actively working on their learning. Yes, and, and I suppose I did choose my word carefully. I know you did. <laughs> and probably arrogant is probably what I meant on that. Um, but I think there is, <laughs> there is a certain, I do believe, though, that men are more confident in themselves. I think women yeah. are yeah. less self-confident, and especially the yeah. higher up they get, you know, of the hierarchy. I think that's where you probably notice the difference is that <laughs> women probably feel more challenged the higher up the ladder they go. And... I would suspect that they are probably more willing to accept feedback. And therefore, that for me, naturally, if you're open to feedback, you're open to learning, is how I would see that. OK, I'm scribbling here because this is this is good. I mean, sometimes I think these sessions are purely for my therapy. Uh, we want them to be of benefit to others. Sometimes I think, wow, that is, this is good. I didn't think that. So, you raise the higher and the hierarchy thing. I think that's a, that's important. I hadn't thought about this, but I think I had, but just not in a mature way. Mm. So my basic tenant is that women make better learners than men, significantly so. And now I'm looking to explore and justify that. I think you've helped me a bit because the higher level thing, I think is important here. And I'm going to say some words here that I haven't rehearsed, so I don't quite know what they're going to be. Given that hierarchies are male dominated mm. and given also in my opinion hey i'm coming up with a few of those they could all be wrong these by the way i accept that given that men dominate the higher hierarchies of organization and given also in parallel to that that i've perceived a lack of or diminishing level of interest in your own development as people progress mm. it's not a great thing to say hey i'm deputy executive and i've got a lot to learn whoops did i really say that i've got to make it look like i know everything and i think if there is a correlation between progression hierarchically and by status and a diminution of interest in your own development 
that also is going to say, hey, men do more of that than women, because women aren't so prevalent in those positions. They're still striving to get to that point where they might also ease off, but they haven't started to ease off as often or as evidently as men. Mm. And you made me think of something else there as well. I think there's also um, the fact that perhaps men see it as if they, and, and maybe for other people, if they see that they need to learn something and that they need to maybe upskill on something, does that therefore open them up to weakness? Does that is that them admitting that they've got gaps? Is that them admitting that perhaps they've not got it all together? So is there something linked to that as well, maybe, with this? Well, how many chief executives, directors, heads of function have you seen on open programs or indeed working in organizations? If I think back, I've been doing this work since 1982. The most resistance that I found generally, not always, generally. The most resistance comes from people beyond a certain hierarchical point in organizations. Those positions are dominated by men. So it kind of fits. Hey, I'm almost convinced myself of my outrageous position here that, that there is a gender factor here because just mm. that there are more people resisting development because they're in senior jobs who are men than women. Mm. And perhaps, you know, when people get higher up the ladder, maybe they always think, well, why do I need to learn anything else? Yeah. Because I'm, I'm higher up. I don't need to. I've, what's got me here is enough skills and therefore I don't need to develop them any further. So I think there's possibly something along that line as well, isn't there really? I, I really believe there is. I mean, I'm not going to get too anecdotal here, but in my first job, the incoming chief executive, who is now a peer and very important, I won't go into naming him, I've done a lot before, it's not appropriate here. That person came on my induction course. I was a lowly sold at that time, ran induction courses, never got people beyond a certain grade, certainly not directors of function in, in, on my induction courses. They were too important. That chief executive came in in his first week and said, I want to be on your two day induction course. I said, that's fine. Chief executive usually comes in and says, hello, welcome. I said, no, I want to be there because I want to put down a market to say nobody's too important in this organization anymore to come on induction courses. And he was there for two days. And of course, he was clever. The legend got round. People on that program, the 20 or so, started to get into the organization at critical time. I said, right, you know, he guess what? Two executives was on this induction course. That set a market down to say, right, you people who are paid less than I am, I'm more important than all of you. Not that he ever played that card. And it said, we all need induction. Wow, brilliant. So there are people who break that pattern, but I think the pattern is strong. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And it's interesting, isn't it, when you start looking into this a bit deeper and for me I don't think it should matter where you are in the structure of a hierarchy there's always room to learn and develop and I and I heard something on a course a while ago that was a bit of a preparation for I think it was a two or three day course or whatever and they did say if you hear yourself saying I know that then just check in with yourself because it generally closes your thinking down. If you know that, then there's no reason for you to listen. Okay, so why are women more hungry to do that than men? I suppose that's where I need to keep coming back to here. Um, I, I felt for a long time, because I have thought about this quite a few years, I used to think more than I feel now that it was about women protecting themselves. Women who are dependent on men as principal learners, as whatever, in the event of breakup relationships, men doing what men usually do. Oh, I'm not, I'm a feminist, but hey, I'm certainly not a manist. Um, I used to think that women felt the need to protect themselves, ensure themselves for a, an independent um, position in life that wasn't dependent on men. I wonder if that's still relevant. I haven't really thought that through in the last few years. Um, I wonder if it's, is also to do with imposter syndrome as well though because i think Ooh. as women just anecdotally uh, or certainly more women are, are likely to admit to imposter syndrome Why? and i think therefore if you continue to learn then i think sometimes that helps to overcome that or helps yeah. to sort of mitigate it to an extent because you think yeah. well actually if i keep learning yeah. then somehow i'm going to feel better about myself you know why? why 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 don't men feel that way I'm not looking for an answer, do. it's an opinion. It's, these are all opinions, aren't they? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe men do, but maybe aren't willing to admit it as much. But I also think maybe to do with what we're talking about before, for women, it's very, yeah. in a lot of the time, it's very obvious that they are the only women or one of few higher up. And therefore, yeah. there isn't the role models for them. So it's, for me, it would feel easier to feel challenged by being in that situation. 
Yeah, there are lots of nuances and caveats to this. I've worked with a number of senior women who very deliberately and openly and explicitly say to me, I'm not the drawbridge, basically. I'm here. I don't want other women coming after me. Um, and I think, regrettably, we see that politically in a certain leader. Margaret Thatcher, I won't mention any names, um, didn't have a single woman in her cabinet all those years. Um, some women feel threatened by the presence of other women. So there's, there are other factors at play here that are very specific to circumstance. Here we're generalising. Yeah, and it is very complex, but I think it's an interesting point to touch on as well, isn't it? I think maybe women are also forgetting about the hierarchy thing. I think women are generally more willing to reflect more. And why? Sort of why? I keep telling me why, because I agree with you, but why? Why, why, why? Why aren't men doing that? <laughs> mm. Yeah, again, maybe it's a cultural thing in terms of that. I swear, it's difficult to put my... <laughs> Mm. finger on it but uh, yeah I, I sense there's po possibly a cultural thing here in terms of that as women we always need to be checking are we doing the best can we be better is there a way that we can improve you know and yeah that slight slight lack of self-confidence yeah I, I guess I, you know, I see all those things and I agree with you entirely because I've seen them for decades I'm still asking myself but why aren't men doing that why do men feel protected from that I mean, I'm starting to think now, by the way, about the very few number of women only management teams I've worked with. Mm. Uh, and that dynamic is very interesting. It's more supportive. It's more collaborative. It's less political. Um, and I, I guess for me, I'm convincing myself there is something in this, that there's something gender driven about an interest in your own learning, but that itself is driven by something else. It could be about this prove yourself thing. It could be about, I don't know what else it is. I think it's evident. I think it's, 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 it's there. And I think it has implications because it suggests that men will just be less likely to behave in a collaborative way, to engage in learning development activity. Statistically, if I look back over withdrawals from accredited programs I've run, I think I'll see more men withdrawing than women, probably because they think, well, I didn't need this. I'm going to be all right anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like arrogance there again, isn't there, I suppose. But uh, so self-assuredness. Self yeah, the self-assuredness, I should say. <laughs> so how do we encourage men to be better learners? What I'm not sure we bother. I'm not sure we bother. I mean, I used to have those sorts of discussions 25 years ago and think, hey, somehow we've got to challenge this. Well, I forget that. Some of these things are too embedded. So I, I always take the view now, guerrilla warfare, basically, if women are more are going to give you more payback, because if we're talking about interest in learning, by extrapolation, which is a fantastic word, um, we're talking about spend. If you've got spend to spend and you've got hours to invest, I would say look more towards women than men. You're going to get more payback. Now, that's an outrageous thing to say, perhaps, in a time of diversity, quality, and everything else. But hey, let's be, let's be realistic. A lot of organizations, I think, are wasting their money on men when they could be investing them better in women. Oh, I think that's a controversial point to end on. <laughs> Doesn't it mean the same thing, though? Because oh, I don't, I, I, uh, no, I'm, I'm going beyond practice here, though, because I think most organisations would say, hey, I'm not doing that, that's outrageous. But, I mean, I don't know, I guess I'm prepared to say, when I anecdotally, and by anecdotally, 41 years' worth of anecdotally, think back to the people who impressed me most at a learning group, for instance, or one-to-one, -one, more of them have been women than men. By, by extension, that investment of my time, which costs money sometimes, but most things have nothing, it seems, has cost money. So you get more payback from women than men. I'm prepared to say, yeah, I stand by that statement. Very good. <laughs> leave the outrageousness to me. You've, you've got to... I, I, I'm going to leave the outrageousness to you. Yes, definitely. <laughs> is, there a, can you, is, is there a little bit of non-nonsense in what I've just said? No, but I also think possibly it depends on industry. Oh, I will right. I will challenge you on that. Okay. I will challenge you on that. I think I think hmm, not necessarily better learners, but perhaps numbers wise. So I'm thinking when I did my outdoor education training, I was outnumbered by men right. massively. There was two girls on our course. Right. Basically. Um so right. yes, but that's maybe numbers doesn't necessarily make them better learners on reflection. Context. Yes. Okay. 
All right, I get that. And living as I have done in the HR industry as a professional activity, although I've extended into all areas, manufacturing, finance, everything under the sun. Um, there are, in my own professional body, Chartered Institute Personnel and Development, of which I've been a jolly good fellow since 1992, my youngest ever, but I don't need to go showing off. Um, I, I regularly run branch events and there's no men. No, all right, that, partly that's demographic. There are a lot of more women in the HR professional activity than men, but certainly in relation to manufacturing or engineering, those sorts of things. Sometimes I say, where are the men? Where are they? Does anyone, does any blokes ever turn up to these professional meetings? And sometimes they say, we haven't seen one for six months. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So yes, I think it was. There's a num. I think you're right. I think there's a number of different factors at play here. That's it's been interesting actually. Ooh. The more we've looked into that, the more different little little elements there are to it. Well, also, you know, I, I think I should start justifying and qualifying what I mean by better. By better, I mean turning up for discretionary events like professional body events. By better, I mean being more engaged being less distracted. Um, you know, I would love to do a study of are men more likely than women be, to be distracted by their telephones uh, during events. So, so I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of thinking, what does engaged learning mean? It means focus without distraction. It means uh, volunteering discretionary for things rather than being nominated. It means engaging more positively. It means thinking as opposed to, yeah, I know that already. It means accepting that you don't know it all, which is self-assured men who are not arrogant. We've established that. <laughs> Have we? Um, it's all those sorts of things. That's what I mean by better. Yeah. Yes. And I think that's different then, isn't it? So I think, yes, qualifying what better is. <laughs> yeah. So I think it does come back down to that willingness to admit that there's more to learn. And I that think you that's can develop further. That's fundamental, isn't it? Because you don't do any of those other things like being engaged, not distracted, unless you think, hey, I've got something to gain from this. Yeah. Mm. Have we concluded anything? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Says Rebecca, but, who's got a real job to do and, and men to return to his colleagues. <laughs> yeah. As, no, well as, as well as your as well as your coaching activity, I'll give that a plug as well. It's not that you're a one dimension person. So I'll ask you, have we concluded anything tentatively? I'm happy to be the, the concluding person. You can be the, well, I think this is a bit mad type person. I'm happy for that split. <laughs> I think for me that it's, it's brought some interesting points actually. And I think, you know, if there are men listening out there, Probably I not, Rebecca. They can't be bothered to this sort well, of thing. Well, probably <laughs> not. You're right. But if there are a few, I would I would encourage you to just be, yeah, those three words I heard. If you, you know, I know that. Just if you, yeah. if you hear yourself saying, I know that, just check in. Do you really know that? What else can you learn from this? Yeah, absolutely. And, and then again, let's not go through lots of false entities because they're working their way towards one. Um, unfortunately, we use the word learning is a term of abuse. You've got a lot to learn. Well, that should yes, be a compliment. Yes. yes, I have. Bring it on. Let's see some of it. Because a lot of what we know has got less value now than it used to have eight years ago. Updating, we don't have to rehearse all this, is so important. I stand by my original contention, albeit with lots of caveats and, and qualifications. Whether it's a fine margin or not, I still believe, and I'll think further uh, around this, that women make a better learner than men. Yeah. Okay. I'm. I'm. I'm inclined to agree with you. Well, I've got somewhere. I've. I've. i in a self-assured way. I bullied you into my position. <laughs> about heck, you can more than starve it off. Thank you, as ever, for a therapeutic point of view. I found it very useful. <laughs> yeah.